The Marshall Islands are a paradise in the Pacific that the U.S. used to test nuclear weapons. This is Bikini. It is here that the military and scientific personnel of Joint Task Force One will conduct the tests with the atomic bomb. Between 1946 and 1958, the U.S. detonated 67 nuclear weapons in the Marshall Islands, which was... Equivalent to 7,200 Hiroshima bombs. The U.S. basically tricked the Marshallese living on Bikini Atoll to leave behind the little land that they had so that it could be used for nuclear testing. The atomic tests conducted by the U.S. caused forced migration and... They have health issues like cancers or thyroids. Since the tests in the 40s and 50s, many Marshall Islanders have moved to the U.S., specifically to Arkansas. We've been homeless for the last 76 years. They have settled in the rolling hills of the Ozarks, nearly 600 miles from the nearest ocean. I think Marshallese, we, we're our travelers. And you know, with our tiny islands, we build those canoes to travel. Nearly one third of all the Marshallese in the world now live in the U.S., and most of them live here in the town of Springdale. Better education, better opportunity. I'd say majority works at the poultry plants. And now the climate crisis is accelerating this migration. You're talking about an entire country that could perhaps disappear by the middle of this century. So how do a people so far from their homeland stay connected to their roots? We went to Springdale, Arkansas to find out how Marshall Islanders came to settle here. This is Sosalina Gibas Madison. She can never go back to her homeland because it's contaminated. I am a sixth generation down, I believe, from the time they took our ancestors from the island. Sosalina is the representative for the exiled people of Bikini Atoll, who now live in the U.S. This flag right here is the, our Bikini Atoll KB flag. And it's kind of based off the American flag. I see stripes and stars. And... Yeah, it's on purpose to remind the U.S. of the damage done to the Bikinians. Three stars right here signifies the three islands that were demolished at the, uh, during the testing. In 1946, the U.S. decided to evacuate Bikini Atoll and forced the 167 residents to leave their homeland. That's one of the reasons why there's almost 4,000 Bikinians here in the States. And I believe whatever happened to us Bikinians has affected all of us Marshallese as a whole. The U.S. detonated 67 atomic weapons in the Marshall Islands, 23 of them on Bikini Atoll, including the most destructive nuclear weapon in U.S. history. Castle Bravo. The width of the fireball at this time, about three seconds after detonation, was four miles. And it was U.S. propaganda that basically tricked the Bikinians to leave their homeland so that the U.S. could conduct these tests. Crossroads, scene 26, take one. This is a United States military film showcasing how the U.S. Navy requested Bikinians to leave their homeland without any compensation. All right, now, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to attempt to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind. The person speaking is Commodore Ben Wyatt. He was the military governor in charge of the Marshall Islands after the U.S. took it over in World War II. Wyatt asked King Judah, the leader of the Bikinians, to leave so that the U.S. could begin Operation Crossroads. The Bikinians were told that this was going to be for the good of all mankind, which is why King Judah agreed to the U.S.'s demands. <laughs> Tell him that's fine. Everything being in God's hands, it must be good. What King Judah said is actually inscribed on the Bikini Atoll flag. Wording on here says, meaning everything is in the hands of God. So the Bikinians evacuated and left on the Navy ship to a much smaller island. The ladies are carrying stuff back to the LST 110A that transported them to Rongrip. So Selena's office is covered in pictures of the evacuation. That's Ben White right there and King Judah and other Bikinians. So Selena said the pictures are meant to be a constant reminder of what happened to her people. What does it mean for you that you are from a land that you can't go back to? I feel like a nomad. I know. It's heartbreaking knowing that I, we don't have a home to go to. The exodus is known to Marshall Islanders as Bikini Day. It's something they commemorate every year. 
even here in Arkansas. We attended an event marking Bikini Day in Springdale, where descendants of Bikini who now live in the U.S. performed songs and dances from their homeland. And they reenacted the conversation between Ben Wyatt and King Judah and recreated the Bikinians getting on LST-1108, the ship that took them from their homeland forever. Many Bikinians didn't know that this move was permanent, that they wouldn't ever be allowed to come back to their home. I feel like we were betrayed and tricked into believing that what we were sacrificing was for the good of all mankind and for everybody in the whole white world to be safe. I had heard of Bikini Atoll in my life only through pop culture. There was SpongeBob who lived on Bikini Bottom underneath the atoll. We need to get back to Bikini Bottom. Oh well. And then there's Godzilla, who the US government apparently tried to kill with a nuclear weapon. SpongeBob and uh, Godzilla, it's used as a, a joke to many people. But really, it's something more serious and uh, devastated, um, sad. The next day in Springdale, we met up with Benedict Madison. Benedict is a project specialist for youth, climate, and nuclear issues at the Marshallese Educational Initiative. So the Marshall Islands are on average six feet above sea level. And we are actually one of four low-lying island nations in the world. Meaning that all the land is at or nearly at sea level. You're talking about an entire country that could perhaps disappear by the middle of this century. Right now, we're already experiencing the impacts of climate change. We're seeing extreme flooding, droughts. That drought has made the groundwater on some islands so salty that it's undrinkable. And then climate change also plays a role in why people are moving to the states. And so when you've got land that's being destroyed, people can't grow crops. If they can't grow crops, many Marshall Islanders go to the urban centers to find jobs. But that's been difficult. Youth unemployment is now above 20%. If they don't find opportunities there, they move here to the States. The Pacific Islanders who first settled in the Marshall Islands 3,000 years ago were expert sea travelers who braved the vast ocean in small canoes. Boat building is an important island occupation. No blueprints or handbooks are used in building these fragile outriggers. The foundation of the canoe is called Joj. Joj in our language is kindness. And kindness is really the foundation of a Marshallese person. So that's why it's called Joj. Melissa Leilan is descended from Marshallese royalty. And she showed me what tools her forefathers used to travel. Many of our ancestors were really good at navigating. They were the best navigators in the world without using any technologies. The art of navigation has been handed down from generation to generation. The stick chart, it was used by our ancestors. So this was their tool by looking at the position of the star and also feeling the swelling of the ocean. They'll know what grids they're at. This was their compass and their map. Melissa founded the Arkansas Coalition of Marshallese, which helps bridge the gap for the islanders who have journeyed to the U.S. Well, every time I talk about the Marshallese community here in Arkansas, people just have this I'd look like, what is she talking about? A lot of people still don't know about what happened on the islands. A lot of people know what bikini is, then in the underwear bikini, but a lot of people don't know that that word actually came from the Marshall Islands. Yeah, the bikini, the swimming wear, is named after Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. A French designer named it that after he learned about the nuclear tests. And so Melissa says it's not only important to teach Americans about this history, but the next generation of Marshallese as well especially for folks like ourselves, who are starting to learn these issues and learn what took place back on our lands and continue that story, continue the legacy and continue telling our younger generation because if we don't tell, it's gonna dissipate. Melissa is the first and only certified court translator for Marshallese in Arkansas and probably all of the US. And she realizes that her role here is important. I was taking juveniles to the court side and saw the, the need for Marshallese interpreters. Majority of our Marshallese folks who are moving to Arkansas, they're not proficient in English. But Arkansas isn't Melissa's permanent home. I will have to go back eventually to assume the role of a royal person, yeah. But I feel the calling that this is where I'm needed the most. And we're talking about nuclear displacement, 
We're talking about climate changes coming up. What we're doing here is we're creating homes for those who need to move out of those islands. But how did the Marshallese community end up in Arkansas to begin with? Well, that has something to do with the Compact of Free Association. The Compact of Free Association is a treaty between Marshall Islands government and the U.S. government. That's Eldon Alec. He's a Consul General of the Republic of Marshall Islands government. So one thing to clarify is that while the Marshall Islands was a U.S. territory when the nuclear tests were being conducted, it's now an independent nation. The Marshall Islands and the U.S. signed a treaty that's usually renewed every 20 years. It started in uh, 1983, and uh, it's a treaty that allows Marshallese to come to the states indefinitely to come and work, but at the same time the U.S. has control over our land and, and our air. In fact, the U.S. still has an army base in the Marshall Islands in Kwajalein, which used to be a testing center for ballistic missiles. The next compact is being discussed right now between the U.S. and Marshallese governments, but many Marshallese want more accountability for the nuclear testing, especially when it comes to radiation and cancers. I am hoping that the U.S. provide enough funds for all the medical issues that we are facing. But what brought Marshallese people to Springdale specifically? That all began with one man named John Moody. The story was he came and he, he worked at the poultry plant here. He actually went to Oklahoma for college. John Moody didn't want to be interviewed for this film, but his story is one that all Marshallese know pretty well. He moved up here to Northwest Arkansas where he started working at the poultry plant. And he found out that, you know, you don't really need to speak a lot of English, you don't need to have a lot of skills. He told his family and friends back home. We Marshallese would like to follow one another, so everybody just kind of follow each other and came here. The Marshallese community in Arkansas has grown from that one person to more than 15,000 today. Since the 80s up until now, we now have that many Marshallese, with majority of them living here in Springdale. And a lot of them work in the poultry industry. In fact, nearly one-third of all the poultry plant workers at Tyson Foods in Springdale are Marshallese. And this grocery store with the pool hall in the back is where they come to hang out after their shifts. <laughs> the Marshallese community in Northwest Arkansas has gotten so big that they even have their own community clinic and radio station. While more and more Marshallese are moving to the United States, what's important to remember is that the Marshallese aren't U.S. citizens. And so that means they can't stay here permanently. But for most of the Marshallese we spoke to, Arkansas is a temporary home. My plan is to hopefully go back after college. The presence of so many Marshallese in Arkansas isn't part of a normal migration pattern. It's caused by U.S. nuclear testing and destruction. And now climate change has made the situation on the islands even worse. And while many would want to go back, some Marshall Islanders don't have a home to go to and are asking for changes to be made in the next compact with the U.S. so that there's a pathway for a safe land for them to live on. We don't have a place to go. So I'd like to see the U.S. government give us permanent land that we can live.